Previously on Ladies First Intro. She's your uh, queen of beach. Step back and enjoy the scenery. More natural than gardens of greenery. But more advanced than some alien machinery. Her love so exquisite. It breaks the laws of physics. We should all be committed. Tesla A, and I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We all have skeletons in the closet. Some of that stuff you just don't forget. I got my own problems to deal with. Now you want me so to deal with what got you started you? in your musical journey? Well, I've been singing a long time, since I was really, really young, and I started recording uh, in my 20s, and uh, singing and performing professionally for about 15 years. I sang in a band for four years before I started recording and, and performing professionally, uh, just as a single artist. But um, and I had my own, I had my own band, and so I, I've, I've done a lot of things, um, you know, in the last 20 years. So I mean, I'm proud of you know what I've accomplished so far, and so I'm ready for 2020. Because you sing all cover tunes, you know, other people's music. And so, you know, that's pretty much a show. It was a band. We had three lead singers, two ladies and one guy. And we were called the Masterpiece Band. And that was a while ago. But I decided I didn't want to do that anymore. You know, it was a lot of late nights and weekends. And I enjoyed singing. And after a while, I just you know, got burnt out on that part of it. And I wanted to do something, for me, you know, for me. Because I like writing really strong passion for it because <laughs> yeah. it's kind of hard to you know to, to catch the feeling when you're singing somebody else's stuff because you know when they were singing it they, they put their heart and feeling it another person can sing someone else's music and put their own you know thing on it and and make it their own and so i guess i see it both ways um you have to catch people's attention sometimes first and and how you do that is by singing stuff that they're familiar with and they'll be like oh she can really sing and, and you know, once you capture that and then you start you infusing your music develop fans oh, and yeah, people will appreciate you and want to hear you know your music instead of someone else's Two. Uh-huh. i like to welcome everybody to tesla nay's juke joint now um I, I wanted it to be you know have a juke joint you know, look to it, you know, old school. And we didn't do as much as we wanted to do because, you know, I was worried about the time frame because the, the song was already out. It had been out for a little while. And so I was like, well, I've got to get this video finished. And so we, you know, we did the best we could. And, and I really liked it. I enjoyed shooting it and all my friends and, uh, you know, that was involved in making it. It was a lot of fun. And that song did pretty well. Um, you know, we got it at most of the blues and Southern Soul stations uh, in the South, and, and we reached a few other stations outside of that. My man's so creamy smooth, unlike any other dude. I can't help but to talk about it. He makes me want to put his name on it. With a little cornbread on the side, I'm definitely his ride or die. I need that snack, huh? He's got my back. We were talking about you know, performing, you know, overseas and, and traveling and stuff. And, you know, a lot of people who are in the UK 
um, because they just have a big appreciation for the, the blues and R&B music. So uh, I guess I would travel to the UK and maybe Jamaica. being trained to sing all of my life. My family, we sing in the kitchen all the time. But when did I start doing music professionally? I have to say um, probably about 2013. Hey, Kitty. What's up, man? Is there anything I can do for you? I just want to keep you happy. Oh, yeah. You what I got was so funny because uh, it was at my aunt's house. And uh, just so happened, we, she was ready. We were getting ready to cook. So I didn't take a whole lot of thought out of it. I just figured, you know, something simple. Everybody don't need a big old um, full court press. They just want something, somebody to treat them nice and cook them a home cooking meal sometimes. a homebody so uh anywhere i'm going as long as everything is taken care of the one place i might go is dubai sitting at home thinking about you baby wishing you would come on over here and put out this fire a little smile and a wink can get you more than you think little town where you you know you come and you raise your kids of course you know we have Rachel Neal and Kenny Neal and Jackie Neal is from here Tyree Neal and uh Lil Boosie of course um so we're rich in the music industry I should say for the most part it's a nice little quiet town Get one more shake left in me so I'm shaking this thing for you you got me shaking in my boots boy I ain't scared Take a good look in the mirror. You better like what you see. Yes, I'm talking to you, girl. Just trying to pass on some positivity. Oh, you can do whatever you want to. If you just learn to believe, the world is your oyster. But ain't nobody going to give it to me. So I'll stay focused on Thank you. Ooh, ladies first, ladies first. Lady Soul. I'm an artist and a writer, and I'm born and raised Dallas, Texas. D Town, baby. <laughs> with you, I don't have a full project. My full project will be coming out in 2020. It'll be my first EP. <laughs> oh, okay. So I got a bunch of singles and a bunch of um, collaborations because, you know, the kind of like the gotcha gotcha thing is you have to be able to find that, that synergy, you know, between producer and artist. Yeah. And luckily for me, I've always Thank God, knock, knock on wood. I've worked with producers who are popular, so they always busy. <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere in the world, you know yep. what I would love to at the Global Citizen Award. 
and they do it in Africa. Um, the, the Nelson Mandela uh, Foundation, they do it annually. Mm -hmm. And um, I would do it. Uh, honestly, I love Africa. Uh, Nigeria had an opportunity uh, to work with a um, Afrobeat artist, oh, uh, wow. Nigerian recording artist. And so um, once I got the opportunity, I started doing research. And you know how you listen to something and it sounds like home? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I've traveled abroad but I've never been had the opportunity to go to Africa and so but like I said doing the research and looking at the documentaries even from the um, Afrobeat King and um, just the music and the culture it just feels like home you know what I'm saying yeah and um, I just think that would that would be a, a real honor the fact that the Nelson Mandela did for African Americans all over the world. You know what I mean? Okay. And so I that would be amazing. Oh, really? <laughs> That's on my bucket list. <laughs> I don't know if it happened, but it's definitely on my bucket list. Call me Wiz Kid, Naomi. <laughs> Naomi Campbell's on the board. Call me. I got my passport, baby. And all my shots. I'm ready. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Yeah, I would love to do gospel, but I think, you know, the thing is with gospel, when you look at Kanye and all the backlash she's getting, and it's like a catch-22 with gospel, if yeah. you don't come out as a gospel artist. But it's even a catch-22 when you come out as a gospel artist, because if you come out, you got to wear a broomstick skirts and stuff up to here, and, you know, the minute you don't do what Christian people quote unquote say you supposed to do that mm -hmm. they don't even do then they ridicule you I just think gospel is one of them things where you know whoo, it's just sticky sticky business sticky business <laughs> I'll say and I'm just one of them people I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do because guess what you will see me and I go to church faithfully I go to Bible study mm -hmm. I serve all of that work on the road you party on Saturday Serve the Lord on Sunday, and you like, hey. Oh, oh, oh. oh boy, that did not sound good. <laughs> Ooh, ladies first, ladies first. This is Nellie Tiger Travis, and I am a native Mississippian. Boy. Ladies and gentlemen, here to perform her song, Slap Your Weave Off, accompanied by the roots. Give it up for Nellie Tiger Travis. I heard the talk has been going around. Well, now it's close to 25 years. If it hasn't been 25 years professionally, I started at early age in church, but on the professional level, it's been a little over 25 years. That girl, you know he's my man. I'm gonna slap your weave off. I'm gonna slap your weave off. I'm gonna slap. really cool it just didn't benefit me like I thought it would it was supposed to it was a small record label and of course the small ones don't really I guess it just works for them if you will it got me to a lot of places it did help me in some form you know a lot of times just having a label behind you uh, states a lot you know for itself I'm still looking. It has to be right for me, you know, because I'm right for me. I was married for once. I got married at 45 and uh, married for nine years. And he passed away last February, but he had gotten married again. After that, I just got into my career and, you know, was trying to make it work because you know, a lot of times trying to make marriage work and try to make this you work. You can't balance it. It's not a balance with that with your career and marriage. That's what I learned. At any rate, I'm just basically more into my career and into my, my life, you know, into my health. So that's my focus right now. Something deep down in my soul. 
they cry, girl. For the upcoming artists, it's always like to tell them, just stay strong and go after your dream, and you will have to make it happen. Because nobody else cares. I would rather, I would rather go blind. First. My name is Miss Key. I'm from Mobile, Alabama. I'm a Southern Soul artist. I just released my new single, Mr. Black. Girl, you just blowing? I know. That man got your nose wide open. Wide open. What's his name? They call him Black. He's a man. I'm so excited. I think every black man likes that song. <laughs> it's just something about a black man that I love. And I mean, you know, I think at one point in life, we've all been kind of cuckoo for uh, a man. Speaking on a one aspect, even with men, I think we've all had that person that has us, you know, just feeling some type of way, would do anything to be with them and just be head over heels for them. So I took all that, what I've been going through in my past and in, you know, my present. And I just, I just thought about Mr. Black, you know, he's, he just, Got me oh so crazy, so that's how that song came about. Oh, Mr. Black. Oh, Mr. Black. Well, I started off of, like everybody else, mainly inside the church. Professionally, I was just riding with a friend one day and ended up into um, Moss Point, Mississippi. It's like a little, another state, but it's like a town that's maybe like 30 miles from here. Friends down there, and they had a studio, and they stood together as rap artists, and ended up, you know, getting with that label. Just start doing R&B and hip hop. Then life happened. Of course, I had to raise my children. You know, went to work every day, and finish my education. When they all left home and I had an empty nest, there's nothing stopping me now. So I picked the mic back up and the rest is history. No, it's way better than the others. I'm not ashamed to say I was head over heels. Sometimes I felt like a nut. I just love Gladys Knight and Stephanie Mills. I think I have, you know, anyone who just really just inspires by all music. Cause then I like jazz, folk music, Janis Joplin. Just really all around different when it comes to music. I don't just have one genre. I don't just have one artist. I just love all types of music. Well, definitely my music is different because I write about what's real. I don't sit around and just talk about something that I have or something that I see like as far as value. I talk about real things. Of course, the music that they're doing now, they're always, they're mainly talking about their cars. They're, you know, we popping tags and stuff like that. I'm talking about reality, love, war, politics, all that. You know what I'm saying? So you don't have a lot of that being said. Everything is fictionalized about the body, the sexuality. I do keep the sexuality in there a little bit, but that's what it is now. It's all about the sex, sexual element. About 20 minutes now, I'll be done. All right. Darnell, when are you going to stop being the bachelor? Because you have to be in My name is Lady Songbird Jenda Harris, and I'm originally from Springfield, Ohio. I have a musical family, so a lot of influence was always around me. I always grew up with music playing all around me, bands rehearsing, just being in the midst of greatness. Uh, my cousin, Cindy Blackman Santana, She's a she's the drummer for Lenny Kravitz, and she's also married to Carlos Santana. My uncle, his name is Aaron Blackman. He is the lead, was the lead guitarist for Roger Trotman and Zap. So I grew up in the midst of greatness, meaning that I have I just come from a very musical background. My mom said I started singing at the age of two, singing all the commercials and jingles that are on the TV and mimicking things that I heard. It's Overseas. 
I definitely want to sing in Japan. I would like to do a little bit, little bit of also singing in UK and and also I'd like to go to Africa. I feel like my my music and my voice transcends. It surpasses to me all all genres, all colors, creeds. I think everybody can identify. I don't like to keep myself in a box. I feel like I have a lot to offer to the world. And going overseas and and showing them what I have, I think that's the best way. love to know how to play the piano don't know how to <laughs> play it something that I might get into later on down the road okay. but um, no I've just been pretty much singing all my life my mom has always put me in talent shows and making me sing I was so so shy she would put me on the spot and make me sing for all the family reunions family functions <laughs> and then growing up she would you know, put me in all the talent shows and I will win trophies and things like that. And then I've always been in choir from from when I started school all the way through high school. And because I've been an active in choir, um, I did all the competitions in choir and I got a full four year scholarship to Morris Brown College in Decatur, Georgia for music and vocal technique. Whoa, special. Oh, yeah. albums that two to see that I've cut one is the, the the newest one is came out October 11th it's called my arrival and that one's out through the label that I signed with music access so that's the first one and I'm working on another album that will be coming out and it's going to feature other artists on the album like Judah Jones and slack mm -hmm. and the first album I work with beat flipper and I work with Gentry Jones, um, and I have some great, great writers on the album that came out October 11th, my arrival. Great producers I've worked with, Chris Keys out of Austin, Beat Flipper out of Dallas. Pretty much just been blessed, being in the midst of greatness. I've had some great writers. Uh, the legendary Rue Davis wrote a song for me on the My Arrival album. Also, Omar Cuttingham, he wrote a couple of songs for me on the My Arrival album so but the new album that's coming out is scheduled to come out maybe the first part of the year i don't know yet but i'm working on it <laughs> diligently it's been written and produced by slack it's been written by uh, a lot of songs have been written by jeter jones so uh look for that 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 will be coming out i have a couple duets coming out with some great artists as well with half of my life decided I wasn't good enough he started lying and cheating and staying out all night my desire to sing started back when I was a kid you know at, at, at that time everybody wanted to be like the Jackson 5 wanted to be like Michael Jackson wanted to have that band going with my neighborhood friends just singing in the backyard we had one neighbor had a drum set he and his sister and I we were sitting in that backyard we have a concert all day long but you know it's a funny thing that he and I we ended up singing in the cover band together and he played drums then 
So um, just having that aspiration at that time to become that big star. And then, of course, that dream went away for over a, over a course of years. And, mm-hmm. and what made me back up was during my divorce, I needed some additional income to take care of my son. Didn't really want to take on a permanent part-time job, but just something to supplement the income here and there. Did the cover band thing for about five years. And then when I got ready to stop, I said, hey, let me go ahead and just see what happens because I had a, a, a good friend of mine with my first single entitled work and found out we were related later Tracy he said you know you really need to let me get you in the studio he said I'm not good enough to go in a studio we recorded it we recorded that first single three years prior to it being released and that because I kept recording it over and over and over and finally he just got tired of me and said uh, hey we, we, you know what let's just release it and it just kind of took off from there You want me to sign these papers? Girl, you said that with the room. But listen to me, baby. With music the way that it it is going now, it's either your rap or it's R&B. And blues is somewhere, it's kind of lost somewhere. So we have a combination of the blues and R&B together. That feel good music, you know, like your earth winds and fires. Those are the kind of songs that you can just really sit back and vibe to, relax to, clean up the house with, those types of things. So that's sort of an inspiration with us in the Southern Soul industry is being able to provide that really good music that's not so much R&B, but not so deep into the blues, just a little combination that's in the middle. I like being independent because of the flexibility, but if a major label and the terms and conditions were right, I would not have a problem signing at all. Take Johnny Taylor's two dollars. <laughs> Cause I needed two dollars. <laughs> Thank you, Father, for bringing me in this world, and I thank you, Father, for giving me so much love. I thank you, Father. For your only begotten son, you sacrificed him so that we live eternally. 